M4 MacBook Pros came out just over a month ago. And personally, I think this is the most significant update since M1 Max came out, especially if you're into content creation. In this video, I'll be focusing on specking your MacBook Pro for DaVinci Resolve. This is the most resource-hungry application I use, but I will go through the whole process of how I selected my MacBook Pro to get the maximum possible performance, but without paying for any features I may not utilize. I'll also give you a second best spec in my opinion, which may be suitable if you don't need the highest possible performance or your budget doesn't stretch that far. And also, I'll mention one model, which I think is, well, difficult to recommend, especially if you're using DaVinci Resolve. It may be still perfectly fine for other uses, but for DaVinci, it's just simply not suitable. Now, the focus of this video is on selecting the right spec for your specific needs. Because choosing the right spec of a new MacBook Pro can be quite tricky. Not only your upgrade options are quite limited, but also they are really expensive. So it's sometimes quite hard to choose what essentially will give you the best possible performance and future-proof proof your machine a little bit without overpaying for features you don't need. I won't be running test after test to show how quickly this computer can render videos or export a set of images. I think there are plenty of great videos already on YouTube which compare different models. You can also look at various benchmarks. And basically, I just use those to select the specification I need for my needs. And my needs are, well, as I mentioned, the biggest one is DaVinci Resolve. That's the most resource-hungry application I use. I expect that I may use Fusion a little bit, but that will be a relatively small part of, of my needs. I also use Photoshop and Lightroom, but to a lesser extent, and well, these applications don't really require quite as many resources as DaVinci. To be a bit more specific, I use my machine mainly to edit 4 to 2 10-bit log video from Sony cameras. Occasionally, I also use 4 to 0 8-bit footage, and recently, I also started using Red Komodo X which produces 6K, 16-bit raw files. All right, so the first decision you need to make is, of course, 14 versus 16-inch. And it may seem like an obvious one. Well, if you need portability, it's the 14-inch model you should go for, otherwise 16-inch. However, there's one really important thing to consider. If you're thinking about getting M4 Max machine, and actually the same thing was true also for M3 Max, then your option by default should be 16-inch, Although you can get M4 Max in a 14-inch model, if you try to really push this machine to its limit, you will experience quite severe thermal throttling. Basically, this smaller laptop is not, doesn't have efficient enough cooling to handle all the power that CPU has. So it's a bit of a pointless scenario where you're paying more for a better performance, but at the same time, well, that performance is at least partially handicapped by thermal efficiency or lack of thereof. So that's why I think that if you feel that you have the need for the M4 Max model, then, well, 16-inch is pretty much your, your only option. So if you go with a 16-inch model, well, by default, you are limited to M4 Pro and M4 Max models. And personally, I think that if you are planning to work heavily with DaVinci Resolve, those are really the only two you should be looking at. Of course, you can use DaVinci perfectly fine even on a base M4 model, but I explained earlier what kind of footage I work with, and for me, really, it was always between these two versions. The next thing you have to decide on is, well, which model specifically you will go for, how many CPU cores and GPU cores. And here is something really important, which I think is very often omitted. And that's something that's specific to DaVinci. If you're using different video editing systems, such as Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, this may not be equally applicable. But when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, you need at least 1.5 gigabyte of RAM per GPU core to make sure that you not only have maximum performance or maintain maximum performance when the system is under full load, but also to avoid using your internal SSD as swap memory, which if you do use it as swap memory over a longer period of time, that will lower its lifespan of your internal drive. But even if that's not your main concern, well, still, you, if you're using internal SSD as swap memory, it will significantly impact the performance of your machine. 
If you look on black margin forums, there are countless posts about that relationship between RAM and DaVinci Resolve and the, uh, the number of GPU cores. This is one of the best threads, I think, about it. If you look at posts by Uli Plank, he did, or the team did, very extensive testing back in 2023 using multiple Apple machines and running some really, really heavy DaVinci pro projects to see what kind of specs were most optimal. As you can see here, DaVinci Resolve can use all the GPU cores you can throw at it, up to 76 in that particular test. And this particular situation, it used up close to 100 gigabytes of memory. And you can go through those threads. I'll put the links in the description. And basically, all the tests were conclusive that for optimum performance, you need around 1.5, 1.6 gigabyte of RAM per GPU core as a minimum. Around two gigabytes are great, but that's not always possible. Anything below 1.5 gig, especially if you're getting closer to one gigabyte, and you can expect that if you start pushing this machine a bit harder, if you're working with bigger projects, more effects, higher resolution files, you will, expect, uh, you will experience quite heavy memory swap using internal SSD. Why am I talking about this so much? Well, if you look at all those specs, let's say we'll choose M4 Pro Mac. The default spec has 14 core CPU, okay, that's fine, 20 core GPU, but as you can see, default memory is 24 gigabytes, and you can upgrade it to 48. Well, with 20 GPU cores, 24 gigabytes of memory is simply not enough if you're planning heavy DaVinci Resolve use. Just to make it clear, for other applications, for other uses, this may be absolutely fine. I didn't test it, but I expect that especially Final Cut Pro will likely run perfectly fine because it's optimized for Max. I used to use DaVinci, uh, I used to use Final Cut Pro a lot in the past, and I was always really impressed how much more efficient it was in comparison to DaVinci when, when running on a Mac. 24 gigs, I think that would be insufficient because basically that's just 1.2 gigabyte per core. So in this case, you would need to go with at least 48 gigabyte option but there, at least there is such option. However, if you then look at M4 Max chips, that's when things are getting a bit more tricky because the base M4 Max chip has 32 core GPU, which has 36 gigabytes of memory. Again, same logic, it's not enough. It's roughly 1.1 gigabyte per core, which, which is insufficient. But the bizarre thing is that regardless of which MacBook Pro you choose as your starting point. With the base M4 Max chip, or the lower power M4 Max chip, you cannot select any other memory option. Basically, it's 36 gig and that's it. If I remember correctly, with M3, there was 96 gigabyte option, which was a bit of an overkill, at least, again, for DaVinci Resolve, but at least there was an option to upgrade it. Here, there is no such option. So, personally, I think this is by far the worst option again, specifically for heavy use in DaVinci Resolve, because there is simply not enough memory. Which is a bit of a shame, because actually this otherwise would be my choice. I think this basically paired with 48 or 64 gig of memory would be an absolutely perfect machine, but there's no such option here. So then you can go with the top M4 Max 16 core GPU, uh, sorry, 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, this one by default has 48 gigs of memory, which again, it's a bit short, roughly 1.2 gigabyte per GPU core, but you can upgrade it to 64 gig, which then puts it at 1.6 gig per core, which is perfect. And you can also upgrade it to 128 gig, which gives you even more headroom, but I will come back to that in a bit. Knowing that we need all this memory for DaVinci Resolve, my ideal spec, is M4 Max, the higher spec model with 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU. And like I said, this is just because you cannot upgrade memory in the lower spec model. With 64 gigabytes of RAM, which for video editing, even heavy video editing, will be absolutely fine. If you're planning to use Fusion extensively, 
you probably should go for a 128 gig option because Fusion will take all RAM you can throw at it. But if you're just planning to do video editing and maybe occasionally a bit of Fusion, 64 will be more than enough. And then when it comes to storage, I think one terabyte is perfectly sufficient because that's more than enough for the system, all your project files, all your software, maybe some other like, documents and stuff like that. And if you want to store footage on your internal drive, then, well, at least in my case, I would have to go for at least four terabyte or eight terabyte option, which are just simply way too expensive. Two terabyte wouldn't really give me that much of a benefit because it just, for my workflow, it would make hardly any difference. And for that difference in price, I would rather get a four terabyte Crucial X10 Pro. And well, it's actually enough money to get one of those external SSD drives and almost enough to also add second, just traditional spinning disk drive as a backup. So that's essentially what I did. I just went with the one terabyte option plus four terabyte external drive. That being said, I tend to work mainly either from home or from one location. I don't carry my laptop with me too much. I do need portability, so that's why Mac Mini was not really a consideration or Mac Studio but it's not like I need to carry it with me every day. Also, I don't really work on the go, so it's not like I'm constantly, I don't know, home, airport, plane, airport, Airbnb, back to the airport, and so on. If I was traveling like that a lot and just constantly working on the go, I would most definitely go with a bigger internal storage. So this is essentially the spec I went for. I went with a 16-inch MacBook Pro, I actually went for nano texture display because it's, it just has less reflections. I prefer those slightly matte displays and I think the price is decent enough. I mean, that's personal preference more than anything else, but, but I went for it. But then in terms of performance, like I said, M4 Max, 40 core GPU, 64 gig of unified memory, one terabyte storage. And that I think is like a perfect, perfect spec for DaVinci Resolve if, if you're planning to use it heavily and you have the budget to, to purchase this machine. If this is an overkill or your budget doesn't extend as far, the next best option is, well, like I said, I would skip the low, lower end M4 Max because of the memory choices or lack of thereof. And I would go instead for the M4 Pro 14 core CPU, 20 core GPU model and I would get that with 48 gigabytes of memory. So with a 20 core GPU, this actually gives me more than two gigabytes of memory per core, which is brilliant. And then I would also go with one terabyte storage. And by the way, if this is the specification you're planning to go for M4 Pro rather than M4 Max, this is also when 14 inch model is actually perfectly fine. You won't experience thermal throttling or at least nowhere near as much as with M4 Max. However, there are also other things you need to consider when selecting between different versions of M4 Pro or even different versions of M4 Max. It's not just CPU and GPU cores. With M4 Max, you get two video encoding engines, which make life a bit easier, essentially make video encoding faster. You don't get that with M4 Pro. So that may be one, another reason why it's worth going for M4 Max. One more thing to consider is the memory bandwidth. So M3, sorry, M4 Pro has 273 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. The lowest end M4 Max is 410 gig, and the top of the range M4 Max is 546 gig of memory bandwidth. That may not necessarily be a deal breaker, but it's certainly something worth considering. So basically there are those additional things that also make that M4 Max model more attractive because you're not just paying purely for those extra cores or extra memory. You are actually paying for, well, basically everything being completely maxed out. And while that M4 Max model is certainly expensive, it's a ridiculously powerful machine. It's the most powerful laptop tested so far. And I expect that it will serve me really well for the next four to five years. Potentially longer, like I said, my previous laptop lasted seven years, but yeah, the last couple of years weren't great. So four to five years, I think it's a reasonable lifespan I can expect from it. And future proofing beyond five years is 
quite hard, I think, anyway, because technology is just simply evolving way too fast at the moment. And also, well, at least in my case, my needs are evolving. So I can predict reasonably well what I may need in the next three to five years. But beyond that, it's hard to tell. So it's kind of no point trying to future-proof for something I don't even know how it will look like, if that makes sense. Now, the last question, I suppose, is that, is this the good moment to upgrade? Well, I think if you're coming from an Intel Mac machine, like I was, it's absolutely a no-brainer. To be honest, even M1 Macs were so much better than Intel Macs that it was totally worth upgrading. If you're on M1, possibly maybe, if you're pushing your machine already to, to its limits, then, well, it will be significant enough jump to, to do it. If you're on M2 or M3, then probably the improvement is not going to be big enough to, to justify the extra cost. Unless, of course, it's want versus need. Also, it's worth considering what's next coming from Apple. So next year, we can expect M5 Macs, which will be, well, as far as MacBook Pros go, it will be probably the same casing, the same design, everything, just with a slightly faster processor and everything else. And then in 2026, we will likely see completely redesigned new MacBook Pros. Long story short, I think that M4 Macs are absolutely brilliant. My experience over the last month or so has been great. I hardly ever hear fans kicking in. If they do kick in, they are quite loud. If, if you really push this machine, it's certainly not silent, but, but it, will still, it will stay silent for a very long period of time. I'm yet to see a situation in DaVinci Resolve where this machine would be struggling or the performance would be below what I expected. So definitely happy with it. And I think that's, that's it for me for today. Hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for the next video, please just put them in the comment section. And thank you for watching. See ya.